one thing which has to be remembered throughout the discussion is that unless and until a kind of integrated thinking does not emerge if the focus is on one particular aspect of information system at the cost of leaving aside the other components the whole idea will not succeed one more important point before i start i want to make it very clear that it is not what but how is the very important question here every problem is different every case that will take up is different from the other there's no commonality between two cases that's the reason why i'm not taking up a particular case and going through the details of how to solve it every case is different and moreover what we are trying to solve that is very different from one case to other whereas how we were solving it or more precisely the process involved in building an information system is more or less common the focus is on process model rather than on a particular way of doing it. so i am discussing a very generic process model which you can apply to any case to the depth that you want to involve yourself in it's an iterative process nothing can be done in one simple linear way we have to go back again and again to the things that we say and fill the gaps as far as you can well will i will not introduce you to any new concepts here whatever concepts has been dealt in the classes i am reorganizing them in a way to make sense let us start with three basic models that all of you are familiar with and see how you can integrate them together to form a complete information system let's look at the first type again and again which forms the basic foundation for all our discussion in information system is the idea of system per se we have discussed this idea in various contexts but i doubt how far people have understood the relevance of it i would like to say that this is the actual what should i say the plan the foundation the architecture on which we are trying to build the information system an information system anywhere in the world will not look any different from this skeleton model from which everything has to start so it's a basic starting point and this is where we will end our discussion also unless and until you are not sure about what are the components involved in the system that you have to build and how to organize them you cannot go forward so spend more time in understanding your problem as a system the idea of which we have discussed a number of times in our classroom identification of three basic components that is input process and output are necessary when i say input i am referring to the whole set of things not only data but other things which are mandatory for the system to run the actual process and the required output once you are sure about these three components of your system identification of three sub items becomes necessary the control component in which in most of the cases is management the structure management structure or if you are talking about a computer based information system that component in your system which can regulate the functioning of the system identifying that component becomes very very essential that could be a software agent that could be a component embedded into your 
software whichever you are trying to write or it can be a process which is defined it can be a proper process for example how will you check that the system is running fine how will you check that the input you have received is correct there should be some component what is that component is it automated is it manual if it is manual what is the procedure who is responsible all these things have to be elaborated so if i have to give you a time share of how much time you have to spend in each tool i i i consider this as an analytical tool a very powerful analytical tool meditating over which you have to get the complete idea about your system so the more you meditate the more ideas will come out you can fill the gaps whichever you can't fill in the first iteration go on repeating this process ask critical pinpointed questions for every component and try to get the picture completely for every input you have identified also identify how will it be processed depending on the output requirements and who will control for every input identified if you are able to map the entire cycle probably you will be successful in the first round so after you identify the control component i have said that one more very very important idea that we discuss keep discussing is feedback loop unless and until the system does not have a meaningful way of collecting and working upon feedback the system will not upgrade itself from will not differentiate itself from a manual system what is the basic use of automating any process is because it becomes a self sufficient system a kinematic system an improved system that improvement is largely due to the ability to take feedback and improve how are you taking the feedback of the system when i say feedback it is not only about the user feedback don't mistake that not only about the user feedback yes that is important after the system runs for a particular amount of time you have to take the feedback from the user i am not focusing on that please understand i am focusing on that component called as feedback which collects the output requirements of a particular system checks it against what was expected from a system and tries to improve itself how are you incorporating the feedback component that feedback component should in turn improve the system that is the main agenda before doing any one of these activities the first activity that you should do is identify the boundary of a system unless and until you don't identify the boundary that is this is the issue that i am considering these are the issues which are not bothered unless and until that boundary is not marked for any system you cannot do any meaningful activity that is you can't identify the input because you don't know the boundary so the activity will be something like this first identify the boundary that is identify what is inside the system what is outside the system then identify the three components input process output as a one to one map it is not simply listing out the input and simply listing out to no there should be one to one map between input and output and how they are processed input again is not limited to data or in non human components it is also huge amount of human components after you are sure about these three components talk about control components how are you taking control of these three very important process and most importantly how are you improving how are you giving that scope for improvement in the system by involving that feedback so more the time you spend on this thinking more clear the ideas will be and more formal the whole approach will be so this is the first analytical tool that you should apply for any problem especially in information systems this concept becomes very very critical how far you are able to identify the components this can be an iterative process you start with the skeleton go on adding as many details as you can fine the next slide one more idea which has been discussed one more tool which has been given to you for your analysis is the idea of a laggard management 
we have said very clearly going back to our days of studying business that any organization can be understood as having a three tier architecture three tier architecture the management needs are distributed neatly in three categories the bottom of the pyramid which forms the most of the user base we say want regular information from any system because they have to do everyday tasks take any system the number of users doing everyday tasks will be more for example in a reservation system there will be many who are involved in doing the booking cancellation type of a job everyday job those people form the bulk of the user base those people will be happy if they are able to access the smallest bitwise information from the system above them are middle level managers who are responsible for some kind of <coughs> aggregate data summarized data what we are saying is you have to understand the requirements of what data do they need to do that you have to understand their role their responsibility correctly and what is their position in the organization i assume that your study in business and management theories will come handy to decide what is this middle level management in an organization what are their expectations and to take such kind of decisions what kind of information can you give them so they will look for some kind of filtered data some kind of summarized aggregated data but with the power of drilling down to the last possible details again speaking about a reservation system a region level manager may want to look at the summarized figure of how many tickets are reserved from each booking station that is okay but at the same time he may want to drill down to the lowest level he may want to know who has booked this particular ticket and all the details associated with that so what i am saying is not only providing summarized information but ability to drill down to the lowest possible level is also necessary sitting on the top of the pyramid are the executive level management guys who have a different sort of expectation from the information they want to relate the existing inside information from their organization with the data which is outside the organization link them together and make sense for example continuing the example of the reservation system i may want to know the summary of the total tickets reserved from point a to point b along with that i want the comparison of what is the average booking rate in the tourism industry so that i can see where i stand so what i am saying is a system which is able to relate external data with the internal data will be much more helpful for the executive level to know the requirements of these three levels of management in the particular context of your business problem is a challenge how far you are able to capture that and how far you will be able to satisfy them determines how successful your information system is again i want to make very clear that when we create an information system we are not creating information system exclusively to a class of people an information system is a generic integrated system satisfying the requirements of a various kinds of people in an organization how far we are doing it is a question how to do this next one sure way of doing this is formulating user policies user policies which mimics the requirements of each level of management 
when you say user control through login, password and things like that, you have to go beyond them. What you should actually design is a user access module which will reflect the needs of management, which will not only give a sense of security to the system, but will install the access policies, who can access what data kind of policy. So to incorporate the various needs, you have to create user access layers. It can be protocols, it may be procedures. It can be embedded into the system, it can be a manual procedure. For example, all the servers are located in a physical room whose access keys are available only to privilege few. It's a policy. So I'm controlling the access of the data not through a software but through physical means. There is a process. See, anything under the sun is a matter of discussion in information system. Nothing is out of context here. Because information systems cover such diverse areas that we have to look at all the possible scenarios. So, don't limit yourself to user logins but go beyond them and create user access policies. This is the second tool. Third tool. Yes. All of you know by now that the idea of information system for us is a collection of five, six components. So whenever you talk about information system, you have to talk about the seamless integration of five to six components. Unfortunately, again, the drawback of the efforts done is the excessive focus on software, simply forgetting the other components. I want to make very clear that software is just a small part in our whole discussion. Information system, by and large, consists of people and procedure, which I give topmost priority to. Then comes the data along with software, supported by hardware and networking. This forms the core of information system discussion. What we do at the end of the day is see how we can integrate these diverse things. So now, where we have started the journey, we saw what a system means. You have to identify the components of each system. Then you have to seek what are the different requirements of different level of management in an organization and reflect them in user policies. Now come to the idea of information system per se and see how can you identify, elaborate and explain the different components in information. So how do we get the holistic picture which I am talking about? You see next, then probably things will be clear to you. This is how you will improve the original sketch that we had drawn for ourselves. So now we understand very clearly that after we have identified the input, the process is done by information system. What is the process component? It's information system. Information system in turn involves identifying five components. It involves framing the user access policies. Ultimately, everything should be driven to satisfy the needs of management at three different levels, having three different kinds of information need. Can you do that? Is the question. Now, the ideas will be more clear on how you should elaborate. <coughs> Once you know how to integrate, now certain questions will emerge. That I will talk in my next slide. For a while we have been exclusively focusing on system within the framework. We have not focused on things outside the boundary. Taking care about the environmental aspects in an information systems becomes very, very, very critical. Let me quote my own example 
on how we miss a point and how sometimes it becomes very, very critical in the operating of a solution that we deliver. In one of the solutions that I delivered, the system failed miserably after we installed the software after say three to four days. When we went back to the client place to diagnose the problem on, the, on why the system failed, we encountered a very strange problem which we did not recognize in the beginning. The problem was with the power system. The server had the UPS which we did not bother to check. But unfortunately that UPS was not working. Since the software was not loaded in the server, they were not using the server. So there was no way we could recognize that the UPS is not working. We installed the software in the server, came back. Now once the server started working 24 into 7, due to the poor working condition of the UPS, the UPS failed. Time and again the server was starting again and again. The server crashed down. Now who should be held responsible for this? We, because we did not care much to see that there are other systems supporting our software. So I want to make very clear to you that if you miss the minutest aspects while you actually deploy your information system, there will be some problem, if not today, you have to face them tomorrow. So there will be various forces acting on the system simultaneously. The forces can be understood in different ways. On the one hand, the forces acting upon the system can be identified and understood using Peter's principles. Peter's five force principle. I hope all of you remember Peter's five force principle. That is the force acting on the system or competition within the industry, the threat of substitutes, threat of newcomers, the forces exerted by clients and the suppliers. There are five forces, Michael Porter's five forces principle. Along with this, I want all of you to also understand that the system does not exist in a vacuum. The system exists in a particular socio-political cultural environment. If you are not sensitive to these things, the system, however good it is designed, will fail. Your study of ethical issues, your study of intellectual property issues, I hope will come handy while you are doing this analysis. You have to try and understand what are these human factors. It could be ergonomics, it could be aesthetics. See, a system is not simply a technical system. The system at the end of the day should be usable. Ergonomic aspects. More than anything, humans have a tendency to look for beauty in anything. Well, I hope everybody agrees. So, the system should not only satisfy the requirements, the system should not only be usable, but at the same time the system should be beautiful. <laughs> Who wants a ugly looking software to be installed on their desktop? I hope nobody. So, what I am trying to tell you is that when you are designing a system at the end of the day, Along with technical insight that you are already having, I hope you should spend a little bit of time on discussing the ergonomic and aesthetic aspects of it. I, I personally use iPod over all of the music players, not because it's a great technical product, not because it's, it, it's usable or a fancy gadget, because I feel that it's an object of beauty more than it. I mean, that's a tendency everywhere. So as system designers, we can't be blind to this thing. Of course, I don't want to get into the controversial topic of how to make a system beautiful, how to incorporate beauty into the system, topic for some other lecture. But anyway, you have to understand that there are forces acting simultaneously on the system. Once you identify that, let's go. Well, once you know that forces are acting on the system, you have to formulate a way to contain them. How to contain the forces, we have already seen. 
said that you develop a strategy. A strategy. So a well thought of, well planned, documented strategy should be developed to contain or manage the forces which are simultaneously acting on the system. If it is a business threat, you should have a business strategy. If it is a political issue that is affecting your system, you should have a political strategy. If it is a cultural barrier which is stopping people from using it, you should have a strategy. If you are talking about an international product which has to be localized in all countries, you will understand what I am saying. So, how effectively you are formulating the strategy? That is a question. What is the judgment that you have to apply here? Next slide. There are various strategies. We have spent enough time in the class discussing them. 12 strategies, 24 strategies, 240 strategies, whatever the numbers are. The point is there are number of strategies. The judgment factor which is very very critical is how will you choose one strategy or other? As a rule of thumb, let me tell you that the expectation would be that you have analyzed at least two competitive strategies completely and then you have selected one. As I keep on saying, one solution is no solution. It's not that simply you say that this shall be my strategy and go on blindly implementing it. No. Unless and until you can't take a judgment based on right information, you cannot justify the design decisions. So when we say you have to take design decisions, it is not the decision to go for XAMPP or MySQL or PHP. Design decision is, how will you counter the forces acting upon the system, one. And second, how have you decided to choose one strategy or other? Well, that is what we mean when we say design decision. After you have taken the design decision and improve upon the solution that we have developed, the solution will look like this. An improved information system architecture should look like this. Please understand that we have expanded the scope of boundary of the system. Now the boundary of the system has been expanded to include two other components. One set of components in the rounded box are external players who are important to your system, your trusted friends as they keep on calling them, the financial institutions, your suppliers, your distributors. You have to identify them and find a means of connecting them to your system. The data should move seamlessly between your system and theirs. How will you do that? I was telling the other day that if the first part of the information system inside the green boundary, if that can be called as ERP, this interaction between the blue box that is our system and the green box which is the internal organization should be called as SCM, Supply Chain Management. And there is a customer base available to us. Our main job is to connect with customers. Most of you are focusing only on this part. I want to tell you that this is a very small part. Having a website, if that is the way you are taking your thinking of information system to be, that's a small part which covers only this link between the organization and the customer. That I call it as CRM, Customer Relation Management. So what is information system all together? It's a sum total of ERP plus SCM plus CRM. Not thought as three independent systems, no. They are interconnected, interrelated, cooperative systems. 
data moves seamlessly between three subsystems which you have to design in a very very detailed fashion the detailed design i will talk about it after a small paper 